Hello, everybody. Sorry I'm a minute or two late to get started. I was busy, madly, writing the following appointment in my calendar. Mars Rover Landing Watch Party. Yes. It's tomorrow. Mars Rover lands tomorrow. Uh, watch party. Well, watch party. I'm starting to pay attention about uh, one mountain time. So if you're a super nerd like me, uh, check it out. Super fun. So there is a watch party on Clubhouse for um, post NASA tweet up alumni. So just to super nerd out for you for a minute. If you ever want to go like watch a launch or um, go to a mission operations center during a launch or all kinds of cool stuff, see data come down for the first time at one of the NASA places, they actually have what's called meetups, or NASA socials. And so you can sign up and uh, attend these things. I was actually got to host a NASA social back for Landsat 8 in 2013 when it launched. And uh, yeah, it was pretty incredible. Um, as the host, I got to meet everybody that was there for the tweet up or the, or the NASA social. I still have my badge around here somewhere. I don't see it on my, on my wall, but anyway. And so there's a virtual NASA social tomorrow for um, the Mars rover landing. So get your nerd on uh, tomorrow for the Mars rover landing. So anyway, okay, on to our normal live. Um, all right, Shelly's got me some really great stuff. One thing I do want to mention right away is that um, about three times a year, I do a project management training, which seems like super yawn and like who wants to do that? But uh, professional development still goes on even in COVID. Um, we've got uh, a really good um, program. It's fun. It's interactive. You learn a lot. You can actually go back tomorrow and use the stuff. So um, I think that's going on like Mar the week of March 8th. So check that out. Be aware. Uh, if you're interested, let me know. Um, project management training. That's down in Rapid City, South Dakota. So only for the locals. I mean, you can fly in if you want. Um, we welcome you. So um, if you want to go, and, and frankly, if you have a company that you think a group of people might want to come, we actually do group offer group rates. So um, reach out to me um, directly or via any of the staff and they'll get to me. So um, I'm also doing an Empowered Women Summit, which is not really my jam in the sense of we love working with every kind of person, but we do recognize that a lot of women are... Um, we love working with professional women and just a lot of women get such mixed messages and signals and all the things about what our role is and moms or not moms or who cares about never, maybe you never want to be a mom and all that. And maybe you don't want to get married and all the things. So there's just a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff for professional women that we have to work through. And I mean, who hasn't had, um, you know, like imposter syndrome to the max, right? So Men have that too, but it's really quite fun to get in a big group of women and talk about fun issues. So I'm going to be speaking, I think about your, your seat at the table, I think is the title of my talk. So you should come check it out. Um, it is, I'm going to post it because um, Shelly is off um, running around doing some errands. So I'm just going to post that link there so you can find it if you're interested. Um, okay, so weekly quote. Um, and this is a good one. Um, aspirational goals create beauty, inspire creativity, and invite meaning. And we, you have to be a little careful with aspirational goals because I think you can say like, we're going to make a hundred million dollars. And that's aspirational, but it's so out of reach that it would be really, it might end up being stressful to like fail in that world. So make sure your aspirational goals are that. They're um, beyond what is considered easily reachable, but, but potentially reachable, right? It helps focus. It helps bring energy. It helps, um, helps get excited about things and frankly, it excites others. We just came off of a mastermind call with Dale Noel, who is the CEO of, of true model management. And she is so inspirational and amazing, really smart. And she's in New York city. And she's just so positive and, and fun to listen to and, and just juiced us all up and we all want to go tackle the world. So it's really, really, really fun. 
to be around people like that, that have aspirational goals and bring that energy into it. And it made me want to go do more stuff, which is hard to do. <laughs> so I'm really excited about it. Um, so our weekly writing prompt. So one of the things we like to do is offer you something to write about, consider, journal on. Um, this is an interesting one. Um, write down the positive ways you've changed over the last five years. So feel free to share your thoughts on that. Um, let's see if Meg was here, I'd ask her, but since she's not here, she's on her honeymoon. Um, I'm going to say a positive way I've changed in the last five years is I have become more patient and I hear the laughing. I hear the laughing. I'm going to ignore you. I'm going to ignore the laughing. But in the sense of, I think the idea of um, giving people room to do things the way they need to, I mean, that is what IX leadership is all about. Um, and so I think that's actually a big one. And not necessarily patient in the way of like, I'm willing to wait and be quiet and in the corner. It's more about giving grace and having patience for people to do the, the do things the way they need to do them. So I think that'd be mine. I'd be curious what yours is. Um, all right, in the news, oh, this is a good one. So um, we spoke to um, some folks this week and it turns out um, the CEO of that company, Investus, um, wrote a really interesting article that's in the news about the number one reason corporate mergers fail. So I'm gonna put that article in here. And you guys aren't into probably involved in corporate mergers that much, but the, the, the take home message is, is that basically we don't pay enough attention to other value, the values of other people, how they match with ours, how we can connect or not connect with them. Um, really just how, how do we figure out how to take cultures and connect them and the value of doing that. And that's critically important, not only in a merger and acquisition environment, but it's also critically important in how you work with other people, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or if you volunteer for a board, um, if they suit, if that suits your mission, um, and those sorts of things. So it's really important to be able to um, think about values and how they align with yours and how you wanna work and the change you wanna see in the world. Especially these days, crazy. I have a thought that passed through my brain. Oh, um, there was a TikTok video. Let me see if I can find that really quick. It was worth doing. So if you just give me half a sec. Oh, I don't know if I can find it handy. Hold on, I think I sent it in an email. Uh, let me see. Aha. And this is really good. It is the question that this video is asking. So this gentleman talks about how he went around and inquired as to if an individual, if, if a person had been asked what is critically important what is the critically important thing that you contributed to this week that nobody else did and he said he was surprised at how um no one had been asked um how people how emotional people got about it and so i think it's a really important lesson in listening and to considering how other people um, think and believe and feel. And I'm going to start asking this question when I go work um, with companies. I'm going to start asking this question. Um, and I think it's an important one. So check it out. Um, so that was a little bonus. Um, that was um, that was a beyond Shelly bonus because she's usually rock star and everything enough. We don't even uh, we don't even go off script. That's an off script. It's an off script one. Um, okay, so IX member questions. Feel free to ask a question live if you wish. Um, I know this time is kind of odd for a lot of people, so we don't get a lot of people live, but if you are live and you want to ask a question, please do so. So one of the IX member questions, I relocated for work in the beginning of 2020. That was a year ago. Okay, you, you know, it's COVID. It's hard to remember these things. I'm going to paste, I'm going to copy and paste the question so you can see it. Um... Okay, I relocated. 
COVID-19 has made my networking and becoming involved in my new community challenging. Hmm. I've applied for several board positions and I have not been selected. Any tips for making my application stand out? Oh, this is a good question. Um, here's the answer. Um, it's not about your application. It's about knowing somebody. Straight up. It's about who else is on the board, who can advocate for you, who's looking for you. Don't just go in cold. And I, do, I give the same advice for if you're applying for a job. So if you go apply for a job, don't just drop your application in with a thousand other people, like literally these days, it can be 500 plus with digital online applications. It's like people can be applying from all over the world. Um, and so how do you stand out? It's because you know somebody taking the time to meet people and understand what's going on. So if the first time you're meeting people is by applying to the board position, it probably means, and you don't get selected, it probably means that you haven't donated your time to actually helping the organization be successful. So let's say in our little town, we have a um, national fish hatchery and archives, US Fish and Wildlife um, runs it, but they have a volunteer program called the Booth Society. It's a friends group. And what they do is every kind of really nice to have activity, whether it's um, visiting the hatchery, whether it's education, whether it's kids programs in the summer, whether it's the museum, a lot of those things are funded and supported by the friends group. So if I wanted to apply to the board of that group, I have been a member of the board of that group, I would first call them and say, how can I help you? What are you doing that I can support? What do you need volunteers for? And then once you're a part of the volunteer part of the organization, then when you apply, they'll, they'll probably ask you to apply and then you'll be a shoe in. So if you're worried that you're not networking enough, before you get to a board application, don't network at the board, network at the volunteer level. And then they're gonna recognize you as being a valuable member of their community before you even apply. So um, as far as the COVID-19 and being hard to meet people, that is challenging, especially if, uh, at least in our community, a lot of the regular volunteers are in sort of the high risk category. So sort of older um, community members, maybe retired folks. And so if it's, it is quite difficult to try to network. Um, and plus they are, have more technology challenges than some others. So it is hard to network with a retiree set, the older set, but, but honestly, there's a ton of opportunities to do online networking, reach out to people. Um, I reached out to a local woman who I knew was gonna start, she's gonna retire and was gonna start her own company. And I just reached out and I said, hey, I'd love to connect. Um, always great to meet entrepreneurial minded women. And we're all, we've got a coffee set up. So a lot of times it's just have a, do, have a point People get spam all the time in LinkedIn. Go out to LinkedIn, write an email, say, hi, I'm new to Spearfish or wherever you're from. Um, would love to meet you um, because I love your work in this thing. Or I see you're on the board of the hatchery and would love to know more about the organization and how I can help. Start, start um, navigating the networking in just a slightly different way than um, you would otherwise. You can do it. Um, okay. Um, the second com the second question, the company that I run has been bought out by a larger company. Mm -hmm. We're hearing that a lot. What, when is the right time to tell my team the news? The company that bought us will help us grow. How do I convey this to my team and avoid panic? Well, you probably won't avoid panic. So that's the first thing. <laughs> the, uh, like in all major transitions, which is, you know, kind of our jam, um, but, uh, one step beyond culture is people going through changes crazy, complicated, stressful. So important to know who's on your team and the kind of people The from an IX leadership. Are they order tolerant? Or do they prefer order and structure? Are they a little more um, squirrely, like to chase new ideas all the time, that kind of thing? But generally speaking, most people prefer less chaos and more order. So when we talk about that, what we want to say is um, don't say what not to say. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be great. 
because they're not going to buy it. And you don't know what's going to happen. And that's true. But they want to understand what the hell you're talking about. So give them as much detail as you can. A lot of times in a merger and acquisition situation, you actually don't know a lot. But what you can tell them is it's not going to affect you. It's going to be you're going to be fine. Um, people are going to you're going to keep doing your job the way you are. It's not going to affect you. Um, there may be um, some reorganization, but not until May. So we'll be sure to keep you posted on that. So your job right now is secure. It's fine. It'll be fantastic. We're going to really enjoy meeting new people. They're going to fit into our culture. We're going to work really hard to um, align the company, the companies and do the things the right way. So the more you can tell them that is consistent and stable and understandable, like understandable and paced out, the more they're going to respond in a, in a positive way. Where people really freak out is when you don't give enough information and you might not think you're being cagey or uncertain, but they feel it. They know that you're like, it's like too much. Um, so that uncertainty is too much for them. So try to be as certain, as clear as possible so you can understand exactly, um, so they can understand exactly what role they're gonna play and how it's gonna affect the people around them. So, because that's what they're gonna be worried about right away. So be reduce the amount of, of uncertainty, be reassuring with facts and statistics and schedules. And, um, and then when people ask questions, be as transparent as you can. Um, we talk about dates. Don't go in there and say, we don't have no idea what's going to happen. Day one is on February 12th. And after that, it's going to be crazy. Don't say stuff like that. You might think that and love that. I, I love that. I'm a chaos person. I love that. They don't like that. So, um, so just try to be as consistent and clear as possible with the general population with executives, other team leads, there may be a little more chaos in the conversation, but always be sure that the, that the communication emphasizes the stability of what's happening instead of, and the predictability instead of the chaos, even though you might be loving the chaos. You're outnumbered I'm by the order tolerant folks in the room. All right. So this is a fantastic program. I'm so excited to share it with you. Uh, Kelsey Sakos is a, a good friend of mine. She was, um, she for ages ago, she took my project management training. Ironically, we just have, we're having another one coming up that we've mentioned. Um, she, uh, I've run into her in every kind of crazy place, way, anywhere there's any good work being done, she's there, um, which I love. Um, she was also invited to the Billy Sutton Leadership Institute as a member, as a participant in what, what that institute, the B BSLI, is the whole point of that program is to uh, grow rural leaders across the state of South Dakota, grow leadership across the state of South Dakota. And um, they are all supposed to have a program or a community project that they're doing. Well, Kelsey had this huge plan. She's really passionate about um, early education, um, preschool reading, and, and those sorts of things. Really passionate about that. And so what she had this amazing idea to um, have a to reach kids that normally wouldn't be reached in traditional education programs through um, finding them at the laundromat. So she had a program called Loads of Love where um, she was uh, going to be providing sort of preschool level education and information in the, at the laundromats in Rapid City. Well, uh, with COVID that kind of got torpedoed. So couldn't really do it as much as she hoped. But what she did do for Valentine's Day, she made a special Valentine's Day Loads of Love event and she was able to um, give away um uh product um basic needs as well as um some preschool reading and education material um for families in need in rapid city so congratulations to kelsey we're super proud of her and just really am am impressed and amazed by her dedication her passion her volunteerism her giving 
and um, really excited to see that project come together. And um, and thank you for everybody, to Kelsey for making that dream come true. And uh, hopefully more to come from Kelsey as she sort of expands the program. And if you're interested in helping Kelsey expand the Loads of Love program, uh, let us know. We'll be happy to connect you with her if you don't know her personally, because she is amazing and is doing amazing things. So, all right. Well, that is the last thing we have. And that's our some good news for the day. Thank you so much for being here. Um, it's my last day soloing. Um, next week, Meg will be back and she'll be soloing because I am off on holiday um, next week with my guy. So um, she will be on her own. Meg will be on her own. Um, next week and it'll be way more fun when we're both together in two weeks to entertain you um, and talk more about all the things that matter to us so and to you when I say us I mean you so I'll just say that matter to you so please reach out anytime with questions issues concerns and check out the links and the questions and we'd love to hear your perspective and um, and hear your thoughts so thanks so much lead powerfully and change the world Bye.